Utah Valley in their home. Grays with the white numbers on the back and the green trim on the front. And the Trailblazers of Utah Tech in their white, white numbered red jerseys. Game on between the Trailblazers and the Wolverines for the regular season crown right here on ESPN+. Plus. And right out of the gate, the Trailblazers trying to send a ball in and they draw a corner kick. Not even 30 seconds into the match. And you hear the Trailblazers bench already saying, make a statement. Haven't even been able to give you the starting lineups yet. And here's a first goal opportunity. This ball swung in and completely missed. Closest lady to that was Halston Cap. Talking with Coach Molly Rouse before this game, she was one of the three players. When I asked her, who should I keep my eye on specifically? She said, well, Halston Cap is one of those. Well, here's another break here for Utah Valley. Lee trying to find Weber instead. Stainbrook will slide it over. Nelson with an opportunity. Oh! That did not bend in the top corner like she wanted it to. Both teams coming at each other real quick here, Brigham. Yeah, I think the 90-second clock is just now striking, and we've already got two shots, uh, well, two goal-scoring opportunities for sure. But like I said, yeah, we're not going to have a couple couple seconds to rest uh, throughout this entire game. We're going to be going back and forth. Coach LeMay obviously is guns a and with what's at stake, it's not very surprising to see him do so. Our third straight night here at Clyde Field. Another beautiful fall evening, like you mentioned, just a couple days away from All Hallows Eve. We got the Green Men group keeping the beat going. And here, Coach LeMay. He knows what's at stake. You could argue one of his most dominant teams that he's put together here so far in his tenure at Utah Valley. Taking a look at the national rankings here, Brigham. Utah Valley ranks number two in the country in assists per game. They rank number six in the country in points per game. Fourth in the country in shots on goal per game. Second in the country in total assists. Fifth in the country in total goals. And third in the country in total points. Needless to say, that's impressive. Yeah, it's a little redundant, but it's easy to tell how how simple it is for this team to score goals. And, you know, that's kind of a no-brainer. Obviously, scoring goals is the most important part of, of soccer when it comes to, you know, being successful and winning games. But a lot easier said than done. And something that UV has done all season is prove that they have not just one striker, one playmaker who can put the ball in the back of the net. They've got players in double digits who can and have done that throughout this entire 2022 campaign. And let's see, as of Thursday, they've scored 15 goals in three games. And I'm, I mean, that's got to be a record at some point. Throwing in favor of the Trailblazers. Just looking at the numbers between these two squads overall, there is a little bit of a discrepancy, but we know that when it comes down to matches like this, you can throw all that out the window. Coming into this match, 19 total goals for the Trailblazers, Utah Valley 44. Shots 163 for the Trailblazers to Utah Valley's 324. Stainbrook to target. To kill Orlando on the ground. And this one rolls right into the hands of Rihanna Hoffheinz. 
So we've got Brianna Hoff Hines, Lauren Buxton, McKinley Barney, Ella Carmody, Carly Nyland, Gracie Dudson, Emily Garbett, Jason Cook Dondos, Brindley Roberts, Halston Cap. And then Shaylin Uyashiro. And for the Wolverines of Utah Valley, usual suspects Nielsen, Weber, Carter, Heather Stainbrook, Nikki Olanda, Megan Sullivan, Ashley Hughes, Jenna Shepard, and Sydney Bushman with the senior, Idalia Serrano, between the posts. Not to, not to correct you, Brandon, but the goals you just mentioned, that's just in the matchup between these two teams. As far as... I beg your pardon. As yes. far, no, as far as... The There's ball goes, played. Oh, deflected off the Hoff Hines. Beautiful run by the Wolverines, and Hoff Hines comes up big time. Could have been disastrous for Utah Tech. I was just going to say, it's actually more impressive. UVU has scored 49 goals this Come season. On, and Utah Tech has scored 20 goals all season. They've scored 44 in their history against Utah Tech, but when I when I heard that, I was like, wait a second, I think they've scored more. This team has been absolutely let loose since the moment that the season started. And so almost 50 goals. They'll be looking for goal number 50 tonight here at, at Clyde Field. And that, that's about a 30 goal, a 30 goal difference between the two teams all season. Utah Tech 10-4-1 overall, 6-2-1 in WAC play. 11-3-3 are the Utah Valley Wolverines, 7-1-1 in WAC play. So eight minutes into the match, Utah Valley's knocked on the door a couple times. Utah Tech is driven a ball across the face of goal. A little bit warmer of a day than what we had Thursday evening. Thursday evening game time temperature was close to 39 degrees. This one a little bit warmer, about 55, and we expect the temperatures to drop again, just like they have the last couple of nights. Stainbrook as composed as ever. LeBay already wants it sharpened up, and I wasn't just going to start, you know, bagging on UVU and their play, but it definitely does seem a little different than it did a couple nights ago. They're still possessing a majority of this game, right? They've got the ball on Utah Tech's half for a large majority of these eight minutes, but they look they look very different than they did two nights ago. A couple nights ago, it was so clean, so crisp. Already, there's been a couple of miscues. The passes just, I mean, see right there, ball goes out of play in what should be a routine connection. But no doubt, I mean, UVU is definitely feeling the pressure, I think, of this moment, knowing that, uh, like you mentioned, a regular season crown is hanging in the balance and a tie might not get it done tonight. Coach the base saying tighter, tighter, and not tight enough. Here come the red shirts. Adalia Serrano had that far post covered, and watched that one go out of play. Either way, very dangerous, nervy moment for that Utah Valley team. Brindley Roberts, the junior from Lake Utah, the one with the left foot strike. Definitely feel the nerves in the air as Lee's breaking through. Clear. Lee swinging it out here to Nelson. Nelson again on the ground, just barely misses. That's twice Utah Valley set up Taylor Nelson on that left hand side, and twice she's missed by inches. 
Nelson could have set up a picnic on both of those shots. She's being given so much time, it's insane. And I think that sort of goes into the tactics. I'm not going to put words in, in the mouths of any coaches because they didn't tell me this, but when you look at that, it kind of tells you that Utah Tech might be packing it in the middle just a little bit. They understand how good the center midfield duo of Stainbrook and Lee is. And so Taylor Nelson might be a little sort of underappreciated, maybe underscouted by this Utah Tech team, given her that much time on two shots early in the game. They're going to look to either put more pressure on Nelson or... And Adalia Serrano comes up to make that grab. Ashley Hughes touches it last. Throw coming for the Trailblazers. We'll get back to that Nelson opportunity in just a second. We're Jenna Shepard tracking. Excuse me, Brandon. We're also seeing J.J. Bludgett, the center referee, uh, being sort of consistent already. Stainbrook put a shoulder into a Utah Tech player, and he immediately gestured to his shoulder saying, that's fair play. We just saw the same thing. Can Faith Weber get there? No. Nope. But Julie Carter is on the other side for the Utah Valley Wolverines. Carter, one of the seniors being honored today. Left foot bounces off of the defender. There, Gracie Knudsen. Nicole Landa back to Lee. Lee likes to pull the trigger from here. Weber, fancy footwork. Slides it over to Ashley Hughes. This left side is a huge gap from our angle over here. And a miscommunication Mark, between Mark, Nicole Land and Faith Weber. Taylor feet, Taylor feet, Taylor feet. On that last drive in possession, when Taylor Nelson's shot it. went Go wide, Atlanta, you heard Coach Chris LeMay Go say that in. has to be Make on frame. Stay. Well, and also what we heard LeMay said was yelling Taylor's hey. feet. He wanted the ball played to Taylor's feet in that instant. And Ashley Hughes, so far, just it's not clicking right when LeMay wants it to. That's the second time. I didn't say anything the first time, but about 30 seconds earlier when we saw Hannah Lee play that ball out wide, Ashley Hughes was sort of surprised by the pass. So maybe a little bit of lethargicness on the part of UVU. Lee, the intended target. Lee inside the box. Now Weber. Dances around. Shepard! Oh, off the post! And the referee is going to signal that that was last touched off of Utah Valley for a goal kick from Brianna Hoffines. The whole crowd collectively gasps. Another strong contingency of Trailblazer fans here. They saw the men lose to Kyle Beckman's squad last night, 1 0. And these. Trailblazer women's team were in the crowd supporting. But what a look for Utah Valley. Yeah, right away. I mean, taking a free kick quickly. You've got Hannah Lee darting down that goal line, and we saw her score or assist twice in that exact fashion on Thursday. I don't know if film was neglected by Utah Tech in these last 48 hours or so, but Hannah Lee... If she's able to do what she wants on that goal line with the ball at her feet, you've got some serious problems coming your way. Sullivan does well with the body deflection to keep it in Utah Valley possession. Carter on the outside. Sullivan with a miss hit. Nicole Landis chests it down to herself. Olandis sends it into the box. Nelson there. Now Stainbrook. Ashley Hughes. Nobody home. Coach LeMay liked the idea. You can hear him say good ball. But no gray shirts in the, in the screen. In a game like this, we're already, we've seen frantic pacing. You have to wonder who's going to overexert themselves first. Well, right on cue, you see Utah Tech lining up four or five subs already. We are almost a quarter of an hour into this game. And I think that energy exertion might be taking place more on the side of the Trailblazers. Ready to say it. Taylor Nelson again, the intended target on this left-hand side. Now back to Lee. Lee didn't see that there was a man coming. 
Now back to Bushman. Weber. And this will be a Utah Valley throw and coming. Ladies, ladies right here. And Molly Rouse, the head coach for the Trailblazers, giving some instruction to these one, two, three, four, five substitutions right making here. their way. And I can audibly see Coach LeMay's mouth when he looked over to his left, and then he looked back at his assistant coach, Kyle Christensen, and he just said, wow. <laughs> and that's got to be a, a little bit of a confidence boost if you're Coach LeMay. You see the opposing head coach send in uh, reinforcements, for lack of a better term. I mean, and it's true. It's, it's easy to see. So far, you has been the dominant aggressor in this game right away. Utah Tech can't cross that half line. You just picking their pocket every single opportunity. And so I think Coach Molly Rouse is not necessarily in panic mode right now because this is not a this is not a win or go home situation for the Trailblazers. They're currently sitting in third place. And so they're 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 in the playoffs almost indubitably and so this is more of just a tactical change. What can we actually get going out there because nothing seems to be working. The strategy on, Jace, will be in full effect throughout this match if it hasn't had if it hasn't been already. I'm interested to see who comes off. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming several of these substitutions will go into attacking roles because that's what Dixie and Burks has been lacking all over, all over. so far on. Despite that one corner kick, it's been all defense that's all the time for the Trailblazers. Yeah, yeah. Savannah Stauffer, Lacey Fox, Kearney Hogan. And Madison Bonson all set hey, to check hey, in. Hey, get in behind me. Julie, get behind. Kalia Woodyad, my bigger part. Come on, Jules. Two of those three players that Coach Rouse told me to keep an eye on here. I'm going to keep an eye on Taylor Nelson. She's all over this attack. And a good dispossession by that back line. JC Cook Dandos. For the Trailblazers, now fighting Nelson. And Jenna Shepard comes in to lend a hand or a foot. And Heather Stainbrook. Now Ashley Hughes, using that speed, now has a tough decision to make. Weber falls down. More players tripping. Barney playing the ball back to Carmody. Back to Barney. Playing keep away from Nelson at this point. There's a good switch of field into Utah Valley territory. First time in probably about eight or nine minutes for the Trailblazers before quickly getting the ball right back to Utah Valley. Saw a little bit of negative body language on the on the uh, head coach there, Molly Rouse, realizing that their, is, her girls are going way too direct right now, trying to force it. Lee laying this one off for Carter. Carter trying to find Stainbrook coming in. Carter lays it off for Orlando with the left foot. And just raises high above Brianna Hoffines. And this is what's interesting to me is, like I mentioned, Coach Rouse said that there were three players to keep an eye on, especially Lauren Buxton as well as Halston Knapp. But the third player that she mentioned here, number 21, Carly Nyland, actually apparently was a former player for this Taylor, team. Taylor, take the line away! 
and you see her come off in that massive line change. She's also the number one scorer that this Utah Tech team has to offer. So it's a clear, you know, a clear motion that Rouse is not getting what she wants on the field. Trailblazers trying to mount an attack. Nicole Landa draws the charge. Nicole Landa set up outside of the cylinder. <laughs> Basketball season right around the corner. And Heather Stainbrook lines up for the free kick. Swings it over to Bushman. Now Lee. Lee gets fouled. That's a dangerous spot to foul Hannah Lee. We've seen Lee, Bushman, Olanda, and Stainbrook all score in their careers from that area. 21st minute. Three more substitutions waiting to come in for Utah Tech. Stainbrook. Lays it over. Sullivan plays it in. The intended oh. target was Sidney Bushman. Flew just past Bushman's head that was up in the air. But either way, last touched off of Utah Tech for another Utah Valley corner kick. Ashley Hughes. Swing this one back to Stainbrook. All the way over to Sullivan. Sullivan yet again. She'll probably swing this one in, and she does. Nelson on the back post. And a handball is called as Nelson took a touch and it ricocheted right off her leg. Worst case scenario. I think I think Nelson is also, like me, surprised by how much time and opportunity she's been given in these first 22 minutes or so. She's already been in on goal twice. That would have been a third time if the ball had found her feet, which, I mean, it pretty much did. Go inside. Go inside. Taylor's on. This is our Utah Valley Fight. version Fight. of Miked Up with head coach Chris LeMay <laughs> tonight. 23rd minute. He's not on a lob mic. He's actually just really close to our field mic. Really close, yeah, and, and enthusiastic. As he should be. This is a this is probably the biggest game of the season. Disregarding, of course, the conference tournament and the game against Seattle, but this is the final game of the regular season, but also every single poker chip that Coach LeMay has, he's put it on. And this is this is the regular conference championship for UVU to lose. Sydney Bushman gets a foul call. 24th minute and the referee is going to continue to have a discussion here with Sidney Bushman. Bushman might have been on this referee's radar having come into this game after earning a yellow card last match on Thursday. by the Trail Blazers. Ashley Hughes pickpockets. You can hear Coach LeMay encouraging her to continue her run. Faith Weber having to pull back just a little bit. And solid defense again by the Trail Blazers, but another careless giveaway. Recovered somehow by the Trail Blazers. I feel bad for the stat crew tonight having to keep track of possession. <laughs> Little hand clicker every time. Well, usually it's much easier. This is this is a UVU team that's sort of struggling to connect the dots. They've got the dot. I mean, that's that's the thing, right? They've got all the dots on the paper. Now it's just drawing the line in between them. Of course, easier said than done. But UVU usually look makes it look easy. Go on, Taylor! Go on, Taylor! Go on, Taylor! Nelson coming up to grab it. Nelson gets around one. Stainbrook in between two. Seeing how often do you see Heather Stainbrook dispossessed in that part of the field with the ball at her feet? She recovers nicely there, and she's, you know, 
99.9% of the time trustworthy to receive the ball and then distribute it. But even there, a few moments ago, you saw her take a heavy touch. And again, could be the cold, could be the nerves. Could be the second match in three away. games. But here, Sydney Bushman got to do hard to recover. She works her way back the track. And an attacking Trailblazer squad in Utah Valley territory. Kearney Hoggin, the one who hogged the ball. To take that one away from the Wolverines. Come on, LB! Come on, LB! This is what's scary for UVU, right? The only real attacking opportunity that Utah Tech has had was a corner kick. And they give up yet another one here. And these are really the only two attacking opportunities of the game. Here's the in-swinger. Punched away by Adalia Serrano. Let's go, Hannah! Let's go, Tech! Let's go, Tech! And Lee, going up a bit against a bigger player, lowers her shoulder. And Heather Stainbrook trying to serve this one up for Faith Weber. Comes up just a little short. And that's not Utah Valley's game. Utah Valley is not looking for the outlook pass so to speak for the that cherry pick type of run they're not they're not that type of team not at all you don't get you don't become the number two team in the nation in assists by sending the ball over the top all respect to faith weber and her abilities and her speed but if they did that every game they would not have that national ranking that they do I mean, on paper and not on paper, I'll say UVU oh, could have been a chance. UVU looks like, you know, they are the team that should win this game. But when you combine set pieces and corner kicks and things like that for Utah Tech, they could easily, you know, just surprise UVU, get a sort of a sneaky goal, and then defend the rest of the time. And we've already seen UVU strike the post. They've missed open opportunities. You know, the, the way that UVU loses this game, there's a million ways they could win this game, but the one way that they lose this game is they're not able to capitalize on their opportunities and they concede a goal from a corner kick. Their own mistakes. Right, exactly. In the run of play, I think UVU's the better team. They have the better possession, but so far, it's been, it's been the not so UVU performance that we've seen. Faith Weber gets a toe on it. Backtracking deep into her own territory is Gracie Knudsen. And then she kicks this ball out of play, giving away three more substitutions coming on the pitch. Sydney Roberts, Emma Carver, and Ali Dahl. Ashley Hughes steps off, and Taylor Nelson steps off for Utah Valley as Katie Wynn and Nicole Ray check on. And those fans that you're hearing, those are Utah Tech fans that have traveled all the way up here from St. George. And they are stoked and excited to see their players on the pitch here in a magnitude like this. Julie Carter goes down, draws the foul, and a free kick coming for Utah Valley. We talked about it before the broadcast. Utah Tech is a good team. And this season, they have sort of shocked the masses, improving on their record last year, their performances last year. And even more shocking, left Seattle a couple nights ago with a draw. A team that UVU was pretty easily handled by. Stainbrook sends his ball in. And Brianna Hoffines. Catches that one with ease. Nicole Landa winning that one in the air. Now Bushman will switch it up on the near side. Katie Wynn, her first touches tonight. Now Hannah Lee, this is more like the Utah Valley style. Switching it up, seeing more space. Julie Carter, the Texan, gets dispossessed. So far tonight, Gracie Knutson's been winning that battle with Julie Carter on that outside. 
Carter now to Lee. Lee lined up a shot. Again, just barely over the top of the crossbar. For such a small frame, Lee has such tremendous power. No. It's those uh, goblet squats that get the quads. I need to do more of those. <laughs> Maybe more people would tune in if if instead of ending in a tie, they just had the opposing team's announcers do penalty shootouts. <laughs> Here comes Julie Carter. Shepard. And the flag is up. Yeah. Look, looked like a uh, yeah. good buildup, but now my... What I thought I heard before is now being confirmed. Coach LeMay wants more shots. And especially from his center back, Jenna Shepard, coming up, too. Faith Weber with the karate kick. Oh, Hannah Lee gets taken down from behind. Emma Carver making her mark and presence known. Lee just beat her to the angle. Snuck inside. Hey, Nicole, get out! Nicole, get out! Hey. You see Heather Stainbrook directing traffic. Stainbrook has the wall oh, to her left. Go, 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 go. And now Hannah Lee is going to come over and talk to Stainbrook. Go, go. 30 second minute. Stainbrook with the go. fake. And Stainbrook lobs this one in toward that back post. Trying to find Jenna Shepard, but Hoff Hines comes in to intercept. Now the Trailblazers trying to mount a counter. Megan Sullivan dispossesses. Sully, as she's affectionately known. Roberts now to the near side. Madison Monson gets dispossessed. Lee has Weber to her left. Julie Carter streaking in. Lee trying to sneak one through that near post. Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. Shot number 10 already. Only two shots on goal, though, for UVU. So struggling right now is the shot efficiency, the accuracy, only forcing a couple of saves by Hoffines, and I mean, this is a, a UVU team that loves to shoot. They're incredibly uh, attack-oriented, attack-minded. They're just sort of lacking that uh, final touch, so to speak. 34th minute, about 11 minutes left here in half number one. Brandon Crow alongside Brigham Harris. Thank you for joining us here on ESPN+. Plus. Again, if you're just now joining us, Utah Valley wins tonight. They win the regular season crown. Katie Wynn stepping in. Wynn laying this one off for Nicole Ray. Ray swings this one in across the post. And nobody there in that space. Here come the Trailblazers. Nicole Landa has been coming up huge in that center mid spot. You know what else is crazy, Brandon? We just saw sub number 10 and 11 for Utah Tech to go in, and they didn't make a goalkeeper change. That means that a player for the Trailblazers has already gone on and come off once this game. How often in a D1 game do you see 11 subs in the first 30 minutes? Ah. The foul's called against Heather Stainbrook, and you're starting to see this Utah Valley team get frustrated. And I think they just need... If I'm Coach LeMay, I just tell them, take a breath, calm yeah. down. Yeah. You guys have been here before. This is your home. You guys are acting like this is a road game. And just play the fundamental soccer that we know. Oh, beautiful cheeky heel. Weber, Stainbrook. And a defensive stop by the Trailblazers gets their fans on their feet. Yeah, 
Yeah, the halftime message from LeMay should be just play your game. Play the game that you have been playing all season, really 18 games into the season. Oh, boy, that was... It looked like crazy Knudsen picked a clean pocket, the sophomore from Linden, Utah. A bigger part from Mapleton. This cold weather is affecting my eyes. Can't read straight. I can't read good. <laughs> Derek Zoolander taught me. Sorry. Dangerous opportunity right outside the 18. Interesting angle on that wide side. Olanda to Lee. Lee lays this one off for Sullivan with the left foot. And that one sailed high and wide. You know, in backyard soccer, you can, uh, and there's not really any rules, but when I was a kid, something like that, if you were, if you had picked players on your team who were good at possession, you just say, we don't want the free kick, we want to just, you know, play from the back. We'll, we'll give it to our keeper and we'll just, you know, possess up and down the field. I think Coach LeMay in this scenario would have rather just had the ball in his goalkeeper's hands and said, you know, we'll play all the way from the back. We'd rather possess than, you know, a free kick because they definitely struggled with free kicks tonight. How many times have we seen them miscommunicate and, you know, not get the play exactly down? And that's normally their bread and butter, yeah. our set pieces. You don't throw the ball into the ground. And if you're frustrated, I've, I've seen too many yellow cards myself from in frustration throwing the ball into the turf. It's kind of like in basketball, you throw the ball into the hardwood, and it's that's kind of like a a no-no. Four more substitutions. I got to imagine that some starters are going back in. I mean, she did. Co Coach Rouse did tell me. They have an incredibly deep team. She said they're traveling healthy. They have no injuries. No one's sick or anything like that. She said we're an incredibly deep team, but I didn't expect to see this many subs. I think we've seen players go on, come off, and now go back on. Hold, Nikki. Hold. A little different from go, the go. sub tactics Julia, of go. Coach LeMay and even Julia, Coach Beckerman. Go. I mean, you have to give credit to, to Coach Molly Rouse and, and her crew at this point for doing just enough to throw this Utah Valley team off kilter. Faith Weber slips down. Stainbrook was trying to thread the needle. And Katie Wynn coming in from behind. And a very dangerous spot, and Dahlia Serrano comes out. And luckily, Megan Sullivan was there to keep this ball up field. Now to Nicole Ray. Nicole Ray with a good turn. Plays it back to Hannah Lee. And Nicole Ray fighting back from injury. Still very crafty with the touch, very calm and collected with it. Oh, filthy move from Katie Wynn. Wynn flicking it up, gets the ball right back, gets tripped up, passes it back to Olanda. Olanda's going to pass it back to Stainbrook for the reset. And yeah, that one slips past Olanda. We'll go out of play. It was a good buildup by UVU, a couple of really good individual efforts, like you mentioned, by Wynn as well as Ray, but collectively, as a team, there were several passing errors and heavy touches just in that 90-second spell of possession. Here comes Heather Stainbrook with the shot and a one-hopper right at Hoff Hines. Just the third shot on goal tonight for U of U, well into double digits in total shots. That's a better look from Utah Valley than what they have been seeing. Absolutely. And Lee loses the ball. 
Great defending from the Trailblazers. Fortieth minute, five minutes left here in the first frame. And a Utah Tech throw in coming. Too, that Faith Weber might need a break. Great toe poke away from Jenna Shepard. Win back to Shepard. Shepard now to Lee. Back to Shepard. Trying to lay this one off for Nicole Ray. Nicole Ray gets pushed from behind and a foul called. Nicole Ray. Tried to fake the quick one. Take your time, get a good ball in. Good ball. And hey, Coach the May just took the words right out of my out right of my mouth. Center. Coach the May saying, take your time and get a good ball in. This first half has absolutely flown by. It's amazing to me that we're already in now the 42nd minute. Here's Ray. <laughs> She had her target. Looks like Jenna Shepard fell down in midair. And another corner kick coming for Utah Valley. Last touch by Tori Brown from Utah Tech. Now Lee's going to give it to Carter. Sullivan, she'll send it in. On the ground this time. Didn't get enough air underneath it. A little referee screen from Stainbrook. Nicole Landa with the left boot back into the box. And an offsides flag is up on Jenna Shepard from the far side. Jenna, work. See, but that's the risk you run in just playing a direct ball over the top. When you've got people in dangerous positions, it's more like you view to say, okay, let's settle it down. Let's play side to side and slowly inch our way up towards the goal. But again, these little miscues, they're not necessarily awful ideas, but again, you, you motion, Ray was on sides and, and in at goal. But if you don't have that Christmas, don't force the through ball. Don't force the direct shot because it's going to, turn into a dispossession and a, a possession turned over when you could. They could still be in possession right now, just knocking it back and forth. Stainbrook. So patient, good ball to Faith Weber. Can she get there? Weber got a touch. Great composure and a little bit of luck for Emily Garbett on that back line. Forty-fourth minute. And this will trickle out. If you're Utah Tech, those are the moments where you need to be crisp and you need to be clean. That's a heartbreaking mistake. 90 seconds left in the half, and they looked like they had something going there. A couple of really quick takeaways and a possible counterattack, but again, an unforced error. That's what's the hardest pill to swallow in soccer are unforced errors. Utah Tech with it. As we approach the final minute of the first half. And a half, like you said, Brigham, that has absolutely flown by. Lee gets dispossessed. Here come the Trailblazers. Nicole Scott. And kicked out to stop the bleeding momentarily by Jenna Shepard. 30 seconds left in the half. Tori, closer. Tori, closer. Indy Winterton to throw it in. Allie, Allie. 
clock stops with 19 seconds left in the half. And Utah Valley really stuffed that one out. Played all the way back, however, headed away by Stainbrook. Final 10 seconds. Julie Carter loses possession. And that's how the first half will come to a close. 0-0 is the score. A frenetic pace from both teams. And if you're coach Molly Rouse and you have Utah Valley here at home, like you said, Brigham, 15 goals here. Utah Valley, if they win, they win the regular season title. And if Utah Tech wins and they secure the third place seed, regular season title on the line. Second half underway here in Orem, Utah. Brandon Crow, Brigham Harris, thank you for joining us on ESPN+. Plus. And we'll see if the LeMay effect continues its trend here through the first 15 minutes or so of this second half. They're looking to attack Faith Weber, who gets shoved out of play and off the ball. So quick goal kick for the Trailblazers. Interestingly enough, Brandon, a little update from around the Western Athletic Conference. Seattle U won earlier this afternoon. And so with those three points, they actually propel themselves past UVU. Obviously, this game's still three quarters of an hour from being finished, so it, it won't really matter at that point. But as of right now, Seattle Here's U on Lee. top. Now Weber pulls it back to Stainbrook. Difficult angle for Stainbrook. I think maybe Coach LeMay was wanting Hannah Lee or Faith Weber to continue that run. But either way, Coach LeMay and his staff clapping in affirmation saying, great job, well done. But anything can happen with the results of this game. A bunch of different scenarios. Not to, not to play devil's advocate too much, but it's been said and we know that Regardless, if UVU wins this game, they are the outright number one team in the WAC. Crown on top of their heads to end the WAC season. The regular season, I should specify, but Seattle U with the victory earlier today. If UVU ties this game, because Seattle U beat UVU earlier this year, they have the tiebreaker over the Wolverines and would then, in so facto, if I'm correct, secure the WAC title. See what happens. Over the next 40 some odd minutes. Good build up inside the box for the Wolverine. Steinbrook didn't get all of the ball like she wanted to. But good build up so far from Coach LeMay's squad in the first five minutes. That's a tough one. Stainbrook probably will not get a better look at goal from that close at least the remainder of the evening. Just sort of mishit it. Didn't quite have all the power behind it that she could have. But this is good so far from UVU. You just saw the ball cross the half line for the first time and right back away, UVU on the attack. Julia Carter on the outside, stumbles. Utah Valley trying not to expend too much energy right out of the gate. And you, not sure if you can hear that or not, but head coach Molly Rouse for the Trailblazers. To our left, trying to talk to that back line of hers, saying that they cannot turn that ball over. Get those center backs on the same page. You know what, Brandon? And I was trying to figure this out in my mind. What she said was, get those two outside center backs in line. And right as she said that, I took a look at their formation. They've moved to a five defenseman formation. So now they have one center, one true center back playing sort of a sweeper, it's been called. Two outside center backs, and then your two outside backs. So they got a five-man wall in that back line. 
that should tell parking the bus. That should tell all of us a couple of things. One, Molly Rouse is uh, not necessarily content with a tie. Of course, she'd love the three points, but it's about damage control right now for Utah Tech, and I think UVU sees that and they say, "All right, that's that's like throwing chum in the water for some sharks. That's just egging them on, basically." And UVU's so far done a pretty good job breaking down that last line. Full house, full capacity crowd here at Clyde Field tonight. Again, thank you for joining us on ESPN Plus. Game time temperature started in the low 50s. Now it's dipped down to the low 40s. Slight breeze starting to pick up. Blowing in from the north, which is from the left to right of your screen. Brindley Roberts now for the Trailblazers. And Nicole Landa, who was all over the place in that first half, continues the second half the same way. Julie Carter pulls the brakes. Back to Lee. Lee back down to Carter. Ooh. A little heavy foot from Carter. Lee's there, however. Look at how many trailblazers are behind the ball, the defensive side of the ball here. Sullivan swinging it in. Takes a deflection off of Weber. Now back to Carter. It's the football equivalent of stacking the box, trying to stop the run. And Utah Tech's in preventative defense. They've got their Hail Mary defense out there just three or four safeties, all cornerbacks on the 10-yard line, you know, just uh -huh. no no score, just no score. That's all That's all they're trying to do is just, of course, I mean, that's the whole point of the defensive part of the game, but these are drastic measures. Usually you see these sort of tacti tactics at the end of a game, but the entire second half, it seems it's going to look like this, but now Utah Tech on a streak. Utah Tech. Dispossessed, and now Dalia Serrano quickly switching up the field. Hannah Lee trying to get the ball to her teammates before the other red shirts come across. Nelson doing well to keep it in play. Nelson trying to go 1v1. Swings it back to Stainbrook. This is a dangerous look for Stainbrook. If she gets space, she will shoot, and she scores! Heather Stainbrook! Breaks through for the Wolverines in the 53rd. Alejandro Silva would be proud. And who else? 13 goals on the season. The all-time leading goal scorer for Utah Valley adds a little more. I was just about to say as we get another look here at the replay, I'll hold on to that thought, but Stainbrook steps over, just the tiniest of creation of space is all she needs. Again, we talk about it, a ball, the circumference of a soccer ball is what, 16, 17 inches? Coaches say all the time, you only need 18 inches of space to get a shot off, and Stainbrook created more than that. Her creativity, her dynamic play has is, is just been creating chances like that all season long, and no surprise, she puts her signature on this one. Yeah, that's a conference winning goal so far. That is a season winning goal so far. And who else, right? Who else would it be, right? And Utah Valley looking possibly to add a little more here. Maybe that was a confidence boost to get this door open. I was, I just reminded myself, a point that I had started to make is that Molly Rouse right away the second half switched to the five backs in the back line and I that may have been a little too quick of a change like I said usually you see that change in the last 10 or so minutes of a match to 
preserve either a lead or a, or a tie if you're down a man or something like that, but she just puts so much pressure, a massive target on the back of her back line. Adalia Serrano comes out and scoops it up. Brindley Roberts again lurking. And now with that goal, it looked like that the Trailblazers were going to be content with, with another tie. But now that you have that goal, trying to come back, obviously, to get another tie. But it, with all the substitutions she made in that first half, I just don't know how handcuffed she is now going forward. Yeah, and that's what I mean by that. I mean, that change to the to the back five, that just shows the other team, we're not only going to park the bus, we're going to park the bus for 45 straight minutes. And when you do that, it sucks a lot of life out of your attack. It sucks a lot of life out of your midfield because you're taking important components and just sort of packing that back line. And so that just allows UVU to take 80% of the field and do what they want. Weber with the touch. Weber to her left. Weber with the shot. Goal number two. Utah Valley feeling it right now at Clyde Field. 2-0 in the 55th. The Michigan kid coming through yet again for the Wolverines. Didn't know if we were going to get a more pretty goal than the first, but the second makes, makes me eat my words. That was absolutely gorgeous. Faith Weber, not only a picturesque finish, but look at this, the little touch, the step over. See ya, creates those all important 18, 19 inches. Ball was so close to even being deflected, but Faith Weber has that killer instinct, that sort of assassin mindset, that once she has that space created, and she's done it now 12 times this season. There's almost no stopping her. And now it's a it's an uphill sprint for Utah Tech to try to get back into this one. And they've got they've got ice skates on. Utah Tech not going away, still with possession. Sending this one in. And this ball trickles, what's gonna be the call? Offsides. An offsides flag. Wow. That's gonna be. I think the whistle was called, but I also think the referee came in because I think it was going to try and say that Adele Serrano was pushed into goal. I mean, there was some definite contact with Serrano. No doubt about that. But the offsides flag is what I'm... Because it looked like the head official looked over to the side official and kind of tapped his chest saying, no, I had a different call. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not, not sure. Yeah. Either way, Utah Tech shows just how quickly they can strike. You get a touch on that one, Brandon? I did. Yep. Are you kidding? Went back to my soccer sharks days, my AYSO Stingrays. Oh, the, the Stingrays, huh? Heard a lot about the Rays. <laughs> Good team. Weber. I'm not sure if she's trying to test Hoff Hines or if she's trying to curl that one into to Nelson on that backside. Well, we waited 53 minutes for a goal, and then in three minutes, we saw three, and one of them was taken away. <laughs> yeah, a breath of, a uh, massive breath of relief is what UVU will have to take, as that could have been disastrous. That two-goal cushion, though, like I'm, like I'm saying, like that first goal by Utah Tech, I know it was taken away, but that was an anomaly. That was an absolute spoof of a goal. And even then, they're still in a two-to-one deficit. So UVU firmly in the driving seat right now. It will take not just one, but several disasters for this lead to crumble. Oh, great ball. Weber onside. Weber cuts back to her left. Weber with the laser of a shot. Hoffheim's point blank save. World-class save. Hoffheim's absolutely a human wall. <laughs> I mean, that that goal was not only destined for the corner, much like the first from Weber, but 
that one had the power that the first one was maybe lacking. Brianna Hoffheinz, the freshman goalkeeper from Salem, Utah, Salem Hills High School. About 25, 30 minutes down the road from here. Coming up big for the Trailblazers. And a corner kick coming for the Utah Valley Wolverines, along with another line change for Molly Rouse. I think this is similar timing to when we saw the first five substitutes for Utah Tech in the first half. We're about 13 minutes in now in the second. So right on cue. Nelson, the intended target for the Wolverines on the outside. McKinley Barney breaking free for the Trailblazers. Ashley Hughes, and then Jenna Shepard punching that one away. Great closing defense with a great angle by Sydney Bushman to seal it off. Carly Nyland was the intended target there, and you heard Coach Rouse say, come on, Carly. She's their top scorer all season, five goals, two assists, and probably the tallest and what looks like the strongest player on the team. But Sydney Bushman, don't know if you know much about her. She's not one to be pushed around on a soccer field, to say the least. She's sort of the... Matteo Palomino of this women's side, just so sturdy. And that's a position that she's been playing ever since she was a true freshman. Finds. Had to get that one away quickly. You know, when you usually watch international soccer, oh, there's a great takeaway, great, great strength by the Trailblazers and can't connect with the pass. I was gonna say, as we reach the hour mark of the match, when you're watching international soccer, club soccer, you hear a whole stadium chanting in rhythm, multiple bands, so to speak, but Utah Valley unsung MVPs, the Green Men Group, in their green leotard outfits, some of them dressed in their Halloween attire, been providing a steady soundtrack for all the fans. Not sure if they can fit heaters under that costume or not. Taylor Nelson inside. Ooh, Faith Weber trying to get the one touch to the toe poke near corner. It was closer than it looked. And still good spells of attack by UVU. I don't think we'll see a 2-0 end to this game. I think UVU will either add to that or, again, maybe a costly mistake ends up in a goal for Utah Tech, but both teams still going forward constantly and consistently. Here comes Utah Tech. Dahlia Serrano. Megan Sullivan frustrated with that side official. She thought that the flag should have been up. Brindley Roberts looked a foot or two at least off sides, but she's also a really quick outside forward, so it wouldn't have been too surprising to see her catch a center back off. Wow. 
Sully. Oh, what a touch. You can't help but smile when you listen to Coach Oh, LeVay. the beautiful touch. Hannah Lee just at the last second took a deflection from Ella Carmody. Go ahead. I think I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> no, I'm still, I'm still smiling. Both of you kind of just looked over at each other because Hannah Lee was combining in that midfield with, I believe, Nicole Ray. And it's like it, it was like watching, I mean, I don't know, a head coach on the sideline of an NFL game sprinting down the sideline when they've got a possible kick return. It was one of those. LeMay was just... Go on, Hannah. Go on, Hannah. Go on. Like, he was so invested in the play, whereas some coaches will say, just go on. And he was just so, like, heart and soul in that counterattack. There's the cross. And the referee blew the whistle. Coach LeMay, Kyle Christensen looking over, wanting to know what happened. So I believe the foul is going to be called against Jenna Shepard. They're going to say a little push off. Indy Winterton battling with Ashley Hughes. Hughes wins that one. Shepard flicks it back to Hughes. Weber posts up, back to Stainbrook. Julie Carter sprinting out of your screen. Now Lee. Lee going 1v4. It's a great read. Lee still with it, now back to Olanda. Grace Knudsen, great read. Hannah Lee, all the speed and athleticism in the world. Knudsen just read her like a book and was able to just stay in front of the play. So three more subs coming in for Utah Tech. 65th minute. Less than a half hour left to play. Like Maddie Moore is up on the sidelines warming up for Coach LeMay's squad. <laughs> Nobody home on the far side for the Wolverines. Indy Winterton will throw it in. This one into the stands. Utah Valley will throw. This ball swung in by Nicole Ray. Faith Weber just looked like a like a stalking lion waiting for that ball to possibly get through the line of defense because she was all alone there on the far end of the box and if it had gotten through she's got a clear shot on goal so the referee motions for the clock to be stopped and he's going to have a chat with Faith Weber and Tori Brown Brown the freshman from Gilbert Arizona and they were jostling like a couple of centers in the key Fighting for a rebound, the referee just said, hey, keep it down, ladies. <laughs> Maddie Moore wake, makes her way behind coach Chris LeMay. Curious.
curious to see who she's going to come in for. Nicole Landa has had herself a night. Megan Sullivan on the near side. And Utah Tech wins that battle. Savannah Stauffer and company. Here's a teed up shot. And J.C. Cook Dandos, the senior from Farmington, Utah, is trying to chip one in over at Dahlia Serrano. A couple of costly mistakes for UVU. Ends up in the first shot by Utah Tech in a long time. Of course, you saw the ball sail way, way over the crossbar. But just the idea of UVU conceding a shot is no bueno in the eyes of Coach LeMay. Doesn't want to see any more of those this game. Instead, he wants to see this a all-out 100% possession for UVU. He's much like Kyle Beckerman. Possession is the name of their game. So Hannah Lee will step off, and Faith Weber will step off, and Piper Vance will come on. Oh, I beg your pardon. So Hannah Lee will stay on. So Heather Stainbrook and Faith Weber get some well-deserved rest. Piper Vance and Maddie Moore will step on. Maddie Moore's first touch, trying to get into that rhythm. And when you've been sitting around for 65 minutes or so in this cold temperature, and, and you get asked to come in, it'll take a it'll take a little minute, a little while to get warmed up and catch into the rhythm. Easier said than done from a couch potato like me with a headset. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to think of times uh, in St. George when it gets down to the low 40s. Oh, what a filthy turn from Lee. That was the starting temperature for Thursday. Yeah. Hannah Lee pulls the brakes. And you hear the encouragement from Coach LeMay's squad trying to get back into that more up-tempo pace. Shepard swings it out to Hughes. Now Ray. Nicole Landa lines one up. Right at Brianna Hoffines. had the pace and right off the boot of Alanda I thought maybe we were going to see another uh, 25 yard stunner we got Hoffines coming all the way off her line somewhere David Beckham is licking his chops Uh, look at this counter over here. Utah Tech with the deflection goes right in the hands of Serrano. Serrano quickly gets it right back out to Lee. Lee to Nicole Ray. Julie Carter, the Texan, wide open on this near side. Holliston Cap instead is going to kick it out of play. Katie Wynn will re-enter the match, and she'll come on for Megan Sullivan, one of the handful of seniors honored. Ashley Hughes, the 72nd minute. Katie Wynn 
with the touch. Cat still running. Gets tripped up. Solid tackle from that back line. Ooh. Great footwork from Indy Winterton. Utah Tech starting to do exactly what UVU wants to do. To play this ball side to side, sort of just play keep away. Instead of going north to south, go east to west. Tory Brown was trying to find the overhead ball. He got snuffed out. Maddie Moore with the patient pass. In stride to Julie Carter. And Gracie Knudsen checking in to see if Carter's okay after a tough collision and a tough tackle. Knudsen's been really solid all evening. Utah Tech is, of course, the two goals that we've seen are, you know, not great examples of solid defense, but as a, so as a unit, Utah Tech has maybe struggled a couple of times, but individually, Knudsen has been as solid as you could ask for, the one-on-one -on -one defending. She's more often than not been the trailblazer on the field to secure the takeaway. Lee. Piper Vance. Now that inside the box to Ray on the ground. Trying to find that far post. And it what looks like it exhausted, maybe tired. Julie Carter couldn't quite get there. As we approach the final 15 minutes. Sort of the part of the game where you really find out which team is more fit. And there's overall fitness and then there's soccer fitness where, of course, the physical side comes into play, but also how long does your soccer IQ stay intact before you get too tired to make the smart pass? Oh, wow. That's twice. Newton again. That Julie Carter has been upended. Carter. Gets the ball inside the box. Carter fighting off defenders. Carter had a window. And Knudsen and company closed the gap very quickly. Hughes. Beautiful find. That one get poked away. All the way back to Bushman now. On the ground, back to Orlando. And last touch by Julie Carter. And a well-deserved rest for Julie Carter who's been giving it her all every second, every minute, every match. One of the seniors, the Texan, the cowgirl with the flying kick. Big surprise, the biggest defensive aggressor for Utah Tech in Knutson just stepped off the field. Yes. Tessa Thornton checked in for Julie Carter. 
And another one, two, three, four, five person line change. Seventy eighth minute. Utah Valley with the two goal lead. Stainbrook in the 53rd, and then Faith Weber in the 55th. Heather Stainbrook, Utah Valley's all time leading goal scorer. right now trying to tell the subs waiting in the wings to apply energy when they get in on the field because all it takes is one second one moment meanwhile Hannah Lee trying to do the exact opposite while you were eavesdropping on the coach I was eavesdropping on all five of the line chains trying to figure out what Utah Tech's game plan is going for 12 minutes left you got two goals of a hole to dig out of. And I gotta be honest, I mean, the the motivational speech by Molly Rouse, as short of it may have been, not sure if that group of five needed it. I mean, they were communicating one amongst another, saying, hey, when you get in, tell so-and-so to do this, and, and you tell so-and-so to do this. I mean, they're, they're a, a well-oiled unit. They kind of know the game plan before it needs to be said. And as a coach, you'd want nothing more than that, Exactly, right? yeah, I mean, that's, that makes your job a heck of a lot, a whole lot easier. But, I mean, even the best of tactics, even the most stellar of goal scorers in the Western Athletic Conference, other than Seattle U, have been able to crack the Utah Valley Code so far this season. I mean, this team, I know there's still 10 minutes to go before they are technically crowned the, the champs of the regular season, but this team has been absolutely stellar all fall. Oh, beautiful find from Lee. Thornton took a deflection off of Ella Carmody. Now sets up a Utah Valley corner kick with 10 minutes left. Should the Wolverines find a goal here? Most likely would be the silver bullet, the garlic steak. Katie Wynn trying to deliver that. Sells high. What other Halloween uh, references? I mean, obviously the nail in the coffin, the, the silver bullet, this, the, what is it? The, you got the, um, the garlic, right, for the vampires. Yep. What else? I mean, is there any other I mean, hallmark? No, nothing, nothing takes down. Jason, he's lasted for 40, 50 years now. <laughs> Same with uh, Michael Myers. Did you see the most recent? No. I don't want to give any spoilers for any audience members, but Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis don't mess around. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does not. <laughs> Shout out to Jamie Lee Curtis. JLC. Heather Stainbrook, Faith Weber, and Haley Richardson set to come back in for Utah Valley. Allie Dahl and Shaylin Uyashiro set to come in for Utah Tech. And Sydney Bushman goes down with a little shove. That's a really tough call, really tough one for Utah Tech to face because it's the first time that they've really been in that defensive third of the field in a very long time and you know at least if you're if you're dispossessed you at least want to have the the feeling of you know a better player took the ball from me instead of a really controversial foul call that just kind of 
leaves you shrugging your shoulders going, what What, what else can we do? And that's the thing. Everyone's been trying to figure out what can we do against this UVU team. Again, obviously, other than Seattle U, who beat them handsomely. Um, everyone else is asking themselves the question, what can we do against Utah Valley to, to figure it out? And I got to be honest, it's that spine, man. It's the spine of UVU. You got the center backs as solid as you could ask for, and uh, Bushman, as well as Shepard, and then it works its way up through the center of the midfield. Hannah Lee, Stainbrook, Olanda is a great supporting center midfielder, and then of course up top. I mean, I I don't know if there's a better center forward in the Western Athletic Conference than Faith Weber, and just the way that spine sort of commands the game, owns the game. And with the help of a, you know, really solid supporting outside backs and forwards, it's, it's a recipe for disaster for everyone facing UVU this season. Coach LeMay whispered over to Stainbrook and Weber before they came back in. Go get one more. Julie Carter and Megan Sullivan, two of the other seniors, along with Haley Hillock and Adelia Serrano on her pregame. Sully and, and Jules, as they're affectionately called, will re-enter the match should their teammates let them. <laughs> I was going to say, final game of the season here on Clyde Field. That much is a certain. So I think a lot of seniors and players who will look back on the season forever as one of the most goal scoring, if you're Heather Sainbrook, in UVU history. Thornton inside the box. Thornton on the ground and kicked away. Sydney Roberts coming in to help play some defense in front of Brianna Hoffheims. And Sydney Roberts. The senior, Lehigh. And Megan Sullivan will come on for Sydney Bushman. Clock, clock, clock. And Nicole Ray will step off as well. So Heather Stanbrook sends this one in. Flies virtually through everybody on the ground. Back to Stainbrook. <clears throat> Maddie Moore. Sullivan. And this one sails wide right. Maybe a little too early for celebration time, but Coach LeMay as focused as ever. That's what's crazy to me about him and his his coaching morals. It's just never he never shuts it off. Job's not done. Never. To quote the late and great. And I'm excited, but also nervous to talk to him after the game because the first thing I'm going to say if, if if things pan out for UVU is congratulations you know you won the regular season title but I know for a fact you know he, he, in a way he's not going to want to hear that he's no. going to he's going to want to hear questions about what uh, what can your team improve on you know what are you guys going to work on before you head into the conference tournament I'll be sure to ask him that but there's got to be I just I think this season would be a miss if I didn't make Coach LeMay crack a smile at least once. And if I don't do that tonight, I I don't know. But he's such a he's such a stoic figure and he's sort of cemented himself in the UVU soccer Mount Rushmore. And senior Haley Hillock will come to the scorer's table. And 
and she will come in for Idalia Serrano, a senior goalkeeper for another senior goalkeeper. Idalia Serrano from Mendota, California, the redshirt senior coming to Utah Valley via UCLA. And Haley Hillock, the senior from Harriman, Utah. The pride of Sky Ridge High School comes to Utah Valley via ULM to finish out the regular season between the posts. And Utah Valley nearly had goal number three, just misses on the outside netting. ULM, U University of Louisiana Monroe. Excited to see Brandon because a lot is going to change in about seven or ten days from now. The WAC tournament will be finished and the NCAA tournament will get set to begin. And who knows where UVU will be at that stage. But if this is the last time uh, you hear our voices here at Clyde Field this year, I think it's, it's appropriate to talk about how nationally recognized this team needs to be. I mean, top 10 in eight different categories when it comes to assists, points, goals. I mean, this team has been one of the funnest teams to watch in all of college soccer. And they might have some more in them in the next couple of weeks. You mentioned the top 10 there, top five in three categories as well, excuse me, four categories as well. Assists per game, shots on goal per game, total assists, total points, and total goals. What's crazy though, both of the goals, if I'm not mistaken, both of the goals here tonight, both unassisted. Stainbrook, I'm not sure exactly the criteria of what constitutes an assist, but both very individual highlight efforts from Stainbrook and Weber doing some dancing on the ball and then unstoppable finishes. Here come the Trailblazers and Hillock comes up as cool as a cucumber. A historic performance for the Utah Valley Wolverines this year. Heather Stainbrook was trying to clear that one back. Took a deflection right off of Ella Carmody. And Stainbrook comes in to see if she's okay. And Carmody in serious pain. Yeah, her neck just snapped back the way that ball just flicked off the heel of Stainbrook. And that's just, we've talked about how cold it is get hit in the thigh with a ball or the or the shin and it stings but to take one off the face with a minute and three seconds left that's oh. Ella Carmody the freshman from Sandy Utah the pride of Skyline High School She is being tended to by the trainers and also by her teammate, Shaylin Uyashiro, the senior from Queen Creek, Arizona. And again, nothing malicious on the play. Heather Stainbrook just trying to clear a ball, deflected right off of her back heel, point blank straight into the head of Ella Carmody. for a speedy recovery for Carmody.
final 30 seconds. What a tremendous moment for this Utah Valley team. Coach LeMay's squad and all the hard work that they've put in, trying not to give up a last second goal. The Utah Valley Wolverines are your 2022 regular season WAC champs. The Wolverines have taken the regular season crown.